For those of us that can remember flying from Pan American's famous world port at New York's John F. Kennedy Airport or JFK, it'll always be a symbol of aviation's golden age. In 1955, the airport operator, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, known as Idlewild Airports at the time, had a master plan to include several terminals built around a central area that could all be served by a looping access road. At the time, Pan American Airways was considered a leader in international air journeys and wanted to make a statement about its lofty aspirations with a state-of-the-art terminal building. For its 16-acre site at Idlewild, Pan American Airways chose the architectural firm Tippett's Abbott McCarthy Stratton to design a futuristic-looking terminal that would be called the Pan American World Port. When the design finally emerged in 1957, the slightly elliptical-shaped building had nine gates sheltered under an umbrella of concrete, which was supported by cables anchored in a massive expanse with 27-foot-high windows. Before the time of jet bridges, Pan Am's World Port was designed to allow aircraft to be parked under the overhang so that passengers could board and disembark aircraft without getting wet in the rain. In 1958, Pan American Airways took delivery of the Boeing 707. The arrival of the larger aircraft forced Pan Am to eliminate one gate at the new terminal so that the aircraft could park nose first into the building. Two remote fueling stations were added to the plan along with a United States Customs facility to alleviate the overcrowding at the existing International Arrivals Hall. As time went by, the world port's ability to handle even bigger planes like the 747 was challenged. The need to expand the structure was evident to everyone, but the only place to build was out on the apron. To accommodate more 747s, a new concourse was constructed. When the expansion opened in 1973, Leading architectural magazines described it as being like a subway station. Its functionality was also questioned as it forced passengers to undergo a labyrinth of walkways while being guided by confusing maps. All of JFK was being stretched to the limit as it tried to cope with changes needed to accommodate the increase in passengers. Operations at what was once the largest airport terminal in the world changed again in 1991 with Pan Am's collapse. Delta Airlines acquired most of the airline's assets, including the lease of the World Port, which it immediately renamed Terminal 3. Delta pretty much continued where Pan Am had left off. However, in 2006, Delta announced that it would spend $10 million on a facelift of public areas. Despite preservation groups calling for the old World Port to be placed on New York's landmark buildings list, the writing was already on the wall. Its flying saucer-like roof was demolished in 2013. The rest of the terminal followed soon after. If you have any memories about Pan Am's world port, we would love to read about them in the comments section. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.